Hi everybody, it's Pandemic Friday and welcome back to Rose Bowling with Art of Lisa. I hope all of you are well out there. Okay, so today I was looking for some inspiration. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do because in all honesty, I'm kind of floundering a little bit. Um, just because I'm trying to get my pattern packets together, I'm trying to take care of the kids, I'm trying to do different stuff, and I just decided I wanted to just free paint today. So let's get started. All right, so if you're new here, welcome. If you wanna hit subscribe after you've checked it out for a while, I would love that. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Okay, I always forget to say that, so I'm trying to get better about saying those things. I hope everybody's well out there and let's uh, just turn our way down here. Okay, so, all right. Don't mind the wiggling. Here we go. So what I have here is the top of a Bentwood box. All right, so the bottom of the box is here. It's just a nice little thin box. And I am just going to do some Telemark painting on this and I'm just gonna kind of go with it. All right, let's, and I apologize that you're shaking a little bit. I wanna thank everybody for your patience as you watch me do this. All right, so I'm gonna start with blues. All right, my typical blue palette is a dark blue. Uh, and, and I should mention, I use Joe Sonia Paints. Joe Sonia Paints. All right, so in Telemark, you need a medium because you want it to have a flow to it. Uh, one of my pattern packets that I'm working on is here. You can see it's a very free-flowing style. So I have literally the top of a um, water bottle, and I put my medium in there. And that medium is my typical one, which is one to one to one flow medium, um, retarder, and glaze. All right, so I have my handy dandy wet palette. I'm going to put some of that medium on my brush. I'm twirling my brush into my paint. I am using a Joe Sonia number four Shore Touch 1350 round. All right, so I have dark blue mix, which is burnt sienna. Well, it's Prussian blue first with burnt sienna. And I have aqua, it's just my mix I like to use. It's just my combination. And let's just see what I can do. If you hear um, shooting in the background, that's my daughter's watching Pirates of the Caribbean. All right. So I chalked in some lines before I started just to kind of give myself some boundaries to follow. Um, do I have anything really set in my brain that I'm painting right now? No, I don't. Um, well, that's, I'm lying. I have a little bit here. All right, so as you can see, I have that nice dark blue mix with a little bit of that aqua in there. I'm going to bring a little more aqua in and I'm doing these nice long C strokes there. Okay. So I push my brush down and then I pull it off like the airplane taking off. All right. So I'm going to maybe do a matching one. Typically Telemark is not matchy, but this kind of box kind of, um, uh, lend itself to doing something that matches somewhat. All right, let me bring that around. And I'm not worried that it's totally perfectly matched uh, because in the long run, once the whole piece is done, it really doesn't matter too much. And again, Telemark is typically an asymmetrical style. So if it's not perfectly symmetrical when I do this, I think it will be okay. All right, let me pull this around. This is a nice strong color to use. All right, <laughs> I have to say, as I'm sitting here, the ground is is shaking a little bit. I can feel the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean going on. All right, so all right, so that's a bit of a start. So maybe what I want to do, typically off your C strokes you want to have an S-stroke pulled off the top. So I'm going to come all the way up here. Make sure you guys can see it. I think you can. I'm going to push my brush down and I'm going to pull it around and 
then bring it off the back of that C stroke. Isn't that pretty? All right, so for those of you who have never been with me before, I can just kind of feel where that brush stroke is supposed to go and pull it around. If you've ever heard of the book Outliers, where they talk about 10,000 hours, oh, I have a lot of hours. I have probably more than 10,000 hours spent in my basement. You know, I was 11 years old when I first picked up a rose modeling brush and, uh, and 15 when I ended up in business with my dad. Um, so, you know, and I'm um, on now. So it's a few years. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I did that on that side. Let's come around to the other side. I'm doing the same thing. I'm coming in. I'm tipping into my medium. I'm twirling my brush in. Pull a little bit of that aqua in there. Twirl it some more. I twirl it because I want to have somewhat of a, um, I want to have a tip on it. So that really works. Let's see if I can put over the white. That works pretty well there. All right, so let's see. I can see where I came across my line here. So let's see if I can match it up a little bit. Yep, and let's just go for it. Okay, I'm pushing my brush down. I'm pushing it down. I'm not turning very much, but I'm pulling it up and pulling it around and down. So let's do that again. I'm going to take my brush, and this time I have some more aqua in it. I'm going to push it down. I'm going to make a little, a little sister down there. And pull it around and notice I'm following around because I always talk about in rose modeling you're following to the sepal there. Now I put a little bump on my uh, top one there so let's put a little bump on this one and I'm not too worried that I have a little faded outlines that's really okay. All right well that's pretty I like that. All right, let's clean my brush out a little bit. All right, I haven't thought too much past what I was doing with this. So maybe what we can do, I'll put a little aqua on my brush. I'm gonna tip into warm white. And let's just maybe pull a C stroke off of here and pull it right in between there. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, I did on one side, so I'm gonna do on the other. I'm going to push that brush down. I'm going to twirl it around and just bring it around and pull it right in. Maybe needs a little more extra punch there. Now, Telemark tends to be a little more transparent than Hollingdahl. You know, if you were with me these past few weeks, or past few videos, I was doing a Hollingdahl keepsake box. The Hollingdahl style is much more opaque. The Telemark can be um, a little more transparent, uh, a little more free-flowing. Um, people have definitive ideas of what they like and don't like. All right, so I've mentioned before, acrylics dry darker than when they first go on. And so you can see that right now that blue is getting quite dark and that aqua is kind of losing its appeal there. It's kind of fading in. So I'm going to come back and go over the aqua and just pull another stroke in on top of it just to lighten it up a little bit and give it a little definition. So let's do this one too. Let's push that brush down, pull it up and pull it around. I want to thank everybody that has been watching my videos and who have reached out to me and um, are painting along with me. I, I really appreciate it and I appreciate so much all the love and the comments that I've been getting. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure and God's gift to be able to share uh, something that really has been given to me by God. And um, I hope that you guys out there do enjoy, you know, what I'm doing, you know. And if you do, you know, let me know. Shoot me a comment. Um, I am hoping, oops, I just made you shake. I hope I'm not making you seasick there. Okay. I am still hoping to start like a teachable site or something so I can do 
little teachable videos. Okay, so this is yellow oxide that I'm just, I like to pull these little strokes in. I like to give this this movement so it's just got movement going around. Um, sometimes when I do these pieces where I'm just kind of winging it, it will comes out great. And sometimes I go, eh, all right, maybe not so great. So let's see how this one turns out. All right, I'm gonna go back into warm white. I still have a little of that yellow oxide in my brush, but I'm not too worried about that. I kind of like if it has a little toning effect to it. Let's add another little white in there. Let's bring it this way. Okay, can you guys see? I think you can. All right. I have a new stand which seems to be working fairly well. It's actually a Mooney baby. It's supposed to be for in a crib. Um, I'm not quite in a crib here, but you know. All right, let's see if we can, let's see if we can bring some color up here. I'm gonna continue with the yellow mode. And let's see. All right, I'm gonna come here. Now, I still have yellow oxide, but I tipped into a little bit of the Turner's yellow just to give it a little more of a pop. And again, because it will dry darker, I'll have to come back over it a little bit. So let's come over here. Let's pull this guy around. Pull another one. I had hoped to do this video earlier. I do end up, you know, so many of you two people like do their videos um, days beforehand and edit and yeah well I haven't gotten to that point yet um, what you see is what you get here all right I like how that looks I like how that looks okay it has a nice flow to it I feel like this and this need a little bit more aqua to it sometimes what I like to do oh and I need I need more aqua here. So, don't worry, your messy palette. All right, when I put down my paint, I don't need very much. That's all I'm gonna put down. When you use your paints, don't go <laughs> Very little paint is needed um, when, you're, when you're painting, and you can always add more uh, to it, which is nice. Okay. So let's go back here. I went into the aqua and I just want to give this top of it just a little flip of aqua there. So once I detail it, that will kind of pop out a little bit more. All right, let's go over here. Let's do this guy. Push down my brush, pull it up, let it go. Let it go, let it go. I've often said that, uh, you know, Frozen, you know, Frozen, the artwork in there is based on rose modeling, mostly Holly doll. That's much Telemark, but there is a Telemark feel to it. So when you go to the Norway Pavilion in Disney at Epcot, which one day will open again, uh, you will see rose modeling all throughout uh, Epcot. In fact, in the store, I've been, there's wonderful rose mulling in there, and I hope it's still there, um, back from when it was originally made. And I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of the rose mullers who uh, worked on that. All right, so now you can see that is darkening a little bit. So I'm going to tip into my Turner's yellow on that, and let's dry brush a little extra color on that. Whoop. I still had a aqua. That's all right. Adds a little depth to it. Not too worried that there's some aqua on there. Um, I sometimes I'm not super picky when I'm painting. Rose mauling can be considered kind of a very picky art form. Um, I am when I need to be and sometimes I'm not because I don't know if the masters going back to when Rose Mulling first started were also super picky or if they just painted. All right, this is 
green oxide. Decided to go a little brighter. I use pine green a lot. You know, I think, you know, all of us, we get into these modes where we'll use the same thing over and over again. And I was like, uh, you know, let's add a little pop to it. Though I will bring a little pine green here just to darken around the edges here. Okay. This is kind of fun. Now, what can I do down here? Maybe continue with some whites. I told you, I'm just, I'm literally just winging it today. No plan. You know, everything that I do is based on the C strokes and S strokes. All right, let's pull this this way. I have this strange feeling they're gonna tell me the pizza is here. All right, you got some family life. Girls, yeah. tell them the money is on the counter or on the kitchen table. Okay, and now you know I ordered pizza for dinner. There you go. It's a very exciting night. That's our normal Friday night. Pizza, and it's normally, well, you know, in the normal time frame, when everybody's running around like crazy people. It's just nice to have this Friday night pizza, hang out at home, just kind of be. So we're trying to keep, keep as much normalcy as possible. All right, I think what I want to do off the back of this is I'm actually going to take carbon black I'm going to do this long S stroke. Then I'm going to come do another one right there. I'm going to just fill it in. It's okay if it's not perfectly black. Okay, let me come back. Push the brush down, pull it up. Ooh, look at that. Well, isn't that fun? All right, let's do one on this side. All right, push down, pull up, push down, pull up. All right, what do you think? Kind of fun? I like that. Oh, okay, I did the white on that side, so let me do the white on this side. Can you hear? They're like feet chomping. <laughs> oh, and they're, okay. And then there's Chloe. Yes, I know, Chloe. You got feet stomping up the stairs. You got Chloe barking at me. You know, welcome to a night in the in the Art of Lisa household. There you go. Can't say it's not real world. All right, so here's the plan, everybody. First of all, again, if you're new to my, my channel, take a moment to subscribe. <coughs> If you're not, you're welcome back again. But I'm going to come back tomorrow with the detailing of this. And I hope you enjoyed just this kind of freeform rose modeling for tonight. Hold on. Let's see. Can we find her? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? She's over. Come here, Chloe. Come here, Chloe. Where are you? Oh, there she is. You can see her. All right, guys. Thank you again for spending some time with me. I'll be back tomorrow because where am I going? I'm not going anywhere. Have a wonderful day. God bless. It's Good Friday. It's Passover. Blessings to everybody. Remember, it's just paint. And take care.